Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to try that again. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. That is Welcome to the worship of Salem of the United Church of Christ. Whoever you are and wherever you find yourself on life's journey, you are welcome here. I'm going to
And on Wednesday nights, Bible study from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. We meet online and as well in the gathering room. If you are interested, we have a wonderful opportunity to read ahead on our scripture and also to have some really engaging dialogue with one another. On First Fridays, we have what's called the LGBTQ Community Fellowship Group, and you are invited if you or someone that you And you want time to fellowship with other like-minded people of faith, this is the time to come and socialize, sometimes have a meal, uh, and activities where we can get to know each other in our communities a little bit better. We are really grateful for all of your contributions and donations to the community food collection. Uh, you can continue to donate all week long. We are taking donations and sharing them between the Salvation Army and the Neighborhood Health Food Pantry. Thank you for all of your donations of food and also uh, dried goods as well. We will be assembling emergency survival packs on Friday, November 25th. Downstairs at 10 a.m., everyone is welcome. We need all of the hands and hearts that we can to make sure that we are uh, not only able to fulfill our order, but that we, uh, of course, are able to share the load with one another. We have a special request from the Department of Veterans Affairs uh, for some sweatshirts, sweatpants, underwear, and undershirts uh, in sizes large, extra large, and 2XL. We will be using those as well uh, for our survival packs, so you can uh, make sure that you get your donations in by or on that day. If you have questions, please contact Bernie Tyler. And if you are online, which many of you I know are, because I follow uh, many of you, uh, please follow our online pages as well. You can visit our website, www.salemgtc.us, or our YouTube channel, or our Facebook page. You can scan the bar code on the screen in front of you, or you can go online to those areas, and you can find our information by Googling or logging in typing Salem Church or Salem UCC Farmington in your browser bar. Well, these are all of our announcements. Now, let us turn our hearts and our spirits over into a spirit of worship and join together in our call to worship. Tells us to rejoice in the Lord always. We come on to worship and rejoice. Again, I say, rejoice. We come on to worship and rejoice. Let your repentance be known to everyone. We come to worship and rejoice. But God is with us. God is with us, and God seeks to make God's self known to us. We come on to worship. Please rise in body and spirit as we will first sing Arise Your Lights on 411 in the middle.
We all sing 577, Glory Be to the Father. Say that again. To care for the good. To care for the good. I think that's a great answer. What do you all think? That's pretty great. Yes, it's pretty Yay. Hi, friends. I would like for you to all help me by taking Ellie. one of these buckets, if you would, these pails. Would you mind taking one of these? I took this one. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to practice taking a noisy offering. Hi, Ami Neha. Would you like one of these or another color? Blue. Blue? Okay. Here's blue. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our friends that are in the pews, and we're going to do this, because then they're going to help us put money in our pails or in our buckets and then when we come back, we're not going to get money now, but we're going to get money later, but we're going to practice walking out now so that later on we can walk. Oh, that's good. It's too natural. All right. Oh, look. It works. Okay. 
call on this side. Oh, thank you so much, Ellie. You're so welcome. Oh, you did. That's wonderful. That was fantastic. Oh, look, there's more. Oh, wow, people have dollar bills. Oh, you can go later on in that service. Awesome. Thank you. Even for the people who forgot, we have this. So we can on the table. But, keep going. Yeah, look at this. Awesome. Oh, wonderful. So now we have all of our buckets, all of our pails. Let's put them back on the steps. Awesome. And don't worry, offering counters, we will have all of the chains picked up off the floor. <laughs> oh, oh yes. Oh wow, Elliot, thank you so much. Oh yes. Whoa. Thank you. Thank you. Oh yes. So guess what we're gonna do with all of this money when we get done collecting? That's okay. Elliot can look at it still. Elliot, don't see Yeah, that's. There you go. Yeah, so that way. We... Peter, this is mine. Oh, that's yours? Oh, because it has the dollars in it? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Give me dollars. Well, what are we going to do with all this money, friends? Uh, you want... Care for the good. <laughs> We're going to use all this money to care for the good. And then, uh, for every Sunday for the next month, we're going to have each of you who are here during offering time help me walk around and collect some offering. We call it noisy because it makes a lot of noise. But then, when you come back, after offering is done, you got to take your bucket and do that, but inside of here. <laughs> so we're going to try that again. Here, I'll help you pick it up. Yeah. Here. A lot of people gave me dollars. Is this the thing? Yeah. yeah. Uh -oh. Some people love their coins. Yeah, that's... I don't know if that's not a bad thing, but that's good for now. So, can you dump it in here? Wonderful. Thank you so much. I can dump... Uh, the rest of them in? Well, let's have somebody else take a turn to dump some in. And then whatever's left over, we'll have you help dump the rest in. Is that okay? No, you dump yours. Okay, so Elliot's going to come dump some. Elliot, would you like to dump, dump yours in here? Yeah. Oh, yes. oh, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Another one? I can have Okay, Anu Meha wants to put one in. Let's see, hold on. Let's see. Which one was yours? The blue one? Yeah. Can I? Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Anu Meha. One more. Hold on. We're going to let somebody else do it, and then you can do it again, okay? Thank you so much. Now, Charlotte, you want to dump yours in? Awesome. Fantastic. Now, there you are, Anu. Thank you. Next week. 
you know, we'll have a lot more change because more people will bring change again. And some people will bring dollars. Is that okay? Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your help. Uh, can we have a quick prayer? Let's have a quick prayer. Dear God, we thank you for all of our friends and all of the coins and all of the dollars that have been donated so that we can continue to help people that need our help. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. All right, friends, thank you for your help. You can either corner or you can go back to your seats with your parents. Thank you so much for your attention today. Thank you all for your attention as well.
join us in singing Every Step of the Way, page 66 in the account.
and our four students running against the future, who talked to us about congregations at risk. She talked to us about how to tackle the proverbial elephant in the room, peace by peace. In week five, we learned that the number one threat to a healthy congregation is anxiety. We concluded that spiritual maturity and emotional intelligence are inoculated against dysfunction, reactivity, and over anxious behaviors. Last week, we learned that if we want our situation to change, that we have to intend it to. We have to articulate a vision for what we want and then pursue that vision relentlessly. Last week in week seven, we reviewed chapter seven by Dr. Peter Stein. And the people in it are connected. We were all urged by Dr. Seidy to use our resources, especially the tools and resources from our faith, to help us. For some of us, health and wellness regimens may include walks or drinking water or aerobics, jogs, pill, power, flower, or tonic. And for all of us, as followers of Jesus, Dr. Seidy says, faith and prayers are our inoculators against dysfunction over anxious behavior and evil. But, he says, faith and prayer are not cure-alls, but they give us strength for coping with and changing reality. So here we arrive now at week eight, and chapter eight. And just as we've seen with the coronavirus pandemic and its devastating impact on our world, we understand that being inoculated isn't manageable. We have a vaccine, sure. And we also have boosters now. And we also have subtle variants of the virus. With the help of scientists, we now know that one simple, one and done isn't enough. Two and a half years ago, that's all we were hoping for. Just get the vaccine. Just get the vaccine. And now we need boosters regular boosters for our immune system, we are to survive. In the same way, Dr. Steine says, healthy congregations need regular boosters to our immune system if we are to survive and thrive. In our readings for today, we hear in Isaiah that things will be better than you remember the things that have been destroyed, specifically the people in Israel who were in bondage and exile the temple, the capital city, and everything they knew was destroyed. And Isaiah, in a prophetic message, says, even if you can't imagine it, God is going to create a new heaven and a new earth. Everything that you lost, don't worry about that, because what is coming will be better than before. In 2 Thessalonians 3, we're told, things change, wars happen, people get sick, evil runs rampant, bad things do happen. Even to otherwise good people. And don't be cold, because your faith will help you endure all of it. In our gospel lesson, it's similarly more of the same. Bad things happen, and yet you can take good from them. Wisdom can come from bad or hard circumstances, and our endurance will save us. To put it bluntly, wars rage, environments are devastated, conflicts happen, communities live in peril everywhere, all over the world. Children are trafficked, bad things happen, and disease robs us again and again. That's reality. It's not all great, it's not all rosy. But there is hope. As we hear from prophet Isaiah in chapter 55, verse 17, God is about to create a new heaven and a new earth. And the former things will not be remembered. You won't even come to mind. You won't even remember what you lost. For some of us, those are hopeful words. And for some of us, those words just don't cut it. Some of us need just a little bit more than prophetic words written thousands of years ago to inspire people to keep going when all they wanted to do was 
give up if everything around us was destroyed. Can any of us relate to that feeling of hopelessness? How do we, as people of faith, persist in the hope and move forward in the world when we know that there is so much pain, there is so much evil, there is so much darkness, and there is so much around us that says, why don't we just give up? Why do we try? passage from a book that I am reviewing uh, that's coming out this week by Molly Vasquez. It's called How to Begin When <clears throat> Your World is Ended. She says, you are sitting in the sun, eating something delicious and terrible for you, brown. Enjoy the moment. It's not going to last. Disaster is not personal, she says. It's the price we pay for being alive on this particular planet. Most of us will not get through life on stage. Resiliency comes not from just suffering, but the type of suffering that fosters a broader perspective and the right supports to help us decide what to do next. Some days are better than others, am I right? Some days are wonderful. The sun is shining, no complaints. And some days are quite the opposite. And because we have little rooms in here and we're in the house of God, I'll let you fill in the blank. But some words are cool. And some debilitating depression. Some days I couldn't even get out of bed. I couldn't do life at all. Part of it was because I had just come through a childhood that completely oppressed and broke my spirit. And some of it was because I stared in the face of the world that told me to do anything but live and thrive. And I didn't want to continue didn't. It was a strain to open the blinds, get out of bed, to drink water, to eat food, to live life, to think about anything other than death because everything around me had died. It took lots of bits and starts, talk therapy, many degree programs, and more talks with God than I can recount before one day Became not just about living, but life became about healing, about growing, and about giving. It's like all the pain that I felt, the anguish that I felt, it literally just one day disappeared. It was like somebody pulled the plug, and perhaps I did almost die because I woke up in a hospital bed. And I said, God, what do I do now? Because that didn't work. And I really thought it would. And God said, now you get to start living your life. And living is different from existing. Living is doing something even if you are taking a step in faith because you know that God is and that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek. pretty far in life, no matter how bad things are in any given moment. Churches are not absent of issues, and church people are not immune from problems. All of us will experience heartache or hardship in some form or another. Life isn't supposed to be easy or perfect or without problems. And yet, there is hope. There is hope because more proactivity, less reactivity, and how we problem solve together can impact our sustained health and continued growth. 
Tragedy happened. Yes, but how do we respond to that tragedy? This ease occurs, but how do we take care of our bodies? Accomplished without chaos and confusion. Decisions can be made that frighten us. In faith, though, are you vaccinated and boosted? Just as we need regular boosts to our immune system to fight against viruses and diseases, healthy congregations need regular boosts of the Spirit of God to support sustained health and immunity against spiritual diseases. How are you connected and boosted by the Spirit? What do you do to surround yourself by similarly spirited individuals? What songs do you listen to? What practices do you have? Are your hobbies? Will grow. It'll grow in you. And it'll grow through you. So let's surround ourselves with a little bit of spirit. Amen.
Uh, you can do so by scanning the barcode on the screen or by going to salemucc.us where you can make an electronic donation. You can also uh, mail checks uh, to the church address on the screen. If you're here in the sanctuary, please continue to support Salem Church with all of your financial gifts. And as we are about to collect our noisy offering, let us also do so in uh, mindfully of our Hey, that we have adopted. All right, let's get our bucket. Let us see Here's another one. All right, ready? container here.
for the work of ministry that is done through your gifts and for all the recipients of these gifts and give you thanks. We ask for continued increase so that we can continue to do the work of ministry in your world. We thank you for all of the resources and for all of these gifts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us say our mission together. Let us go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love the son. And now, let's be the one who saves, who gives peace of mind, restoration, and joy, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. May this same mind be in you that's in Christ Jesus. May the peace, restoration, and joy of our God be with you always. Amen. Please join us in singing I've Got Peace Like a River, 368 in the hymnal. Yeah. 